What's up, guys? It's Zap. Hopefully, you know me, your Renew Nashville uh, program manager here at the EC. Uh, lots of exciting things happen. Hopefully, everyone's been able to connect with the resources that they've needed. Uh, I will tell people on this call, everyone who gets on the call, I try and give them a little, like, a little nugget that the other people don't know. We have an event next Thursday with three um, Nashville female small business founders. And for Renew Nashville, they've like just donated some of their items. So the first 30 people to sign up get these gift boxes in which there's J Judith Bright earrings, cupcakes from the cupcake collection. And I actually don't know. The third one I think is a cookbook from Manit Chohan. I think those are the three items, but don't quote me on it. I just found this out this morning. And so y'all, when I send that email, you're going to want to sign up if you want that stuff. I'm serious. I'm really excited. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, and they're going to give a talk. And no matter what, you can still kind of tune in and participate. But first 30, get like a Christmas present from them, essentially. Anyways, I'm super stoked uh, to have Erica Harvell come. Erica is a longtime ECR, uh, an advisor, founder of Twin Day, entrepreneur herself. There's like a whole list, speaker, consultant. <laughs> Like Erica does it all, I'm serious. Uh, but she's really just an expert in this kind of like mobile marketing place, getting in front of your customers in this virtual world. Anyways, appreciate you Erica so much for being here and I'm gonna hand things off to you. Thank you so much for allowing me to uh, speak to your class. I was excited about Renew Nashville uh, when it came across my email. I immediately emailed back and said, I wanna be a part of it. <laughs> so definitely excited. Um, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, let's see. I promise you, I know how to use Zoom. Let me see. Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. And if it goes away when I go into present mode, let me know because I'll be talking and, and when I know. Can you still see it? Yep. Okay. All right. So today um, we're going to talk about mobile marketing, which is a uh, new trend that is uh, rapidly growing. And um, so mobile marketing is a way for you to be everywhere your customers are. Um, <clears throat> the breakdown of the session today, we just, we're gonna do a five minute icebreaker. We're gonna talk a little bit about uh, what mobile marketing is versus digital marketing. And then we're gonna dig into the 17 R's of uh, mobile marketing. Um, I promise you that number 17 is really big, but it will not be long. We'll run through it really, really quickly. Um, and then we'll just do a summarize and I'll say thank you and we'll just go about our day. I would love it for it to be interactive. So uh, if you have a question about something that I say, feel free to go off mute, uh, ask or drop it in the chat um, and with the icebreaker. So um, I wanna know how we're doing with our marketing. So who has heard of us besides the awesome introduction that uh, Zap just gave? Who's heard of me and um, know that? And who can tell me what know that stands for? I can't see the chat, unfortunately. So, um, well, yes, I can. Yeah, I can fill you in. Okay. River Queen Voyages has heard of you. Of course. <laughs> That's so funny. Shall I say hello? Honestly, I'm guessing most people on this call haven't heard of you. It's a lot of new EC companies. Oh, okay. Well, it, that gives me a pulse on how well we're doing with our marketing in Nashville. Um, because we um, are marketing on mobile, we're marketing with uh, Google ads. And so that tells me um, uh, how far our marketing reach is and uh, what we need to do to increase that, to make sure that uh, more people know about us. Uh, where are your customers right now? Any answers in the chat? You can go off mute too and just and say it. I know we have such a shy group today. Come on, y'all. Does anybody know, like specifically at this time of day, where is your target customer? Nationwide, Instagram, in the hospital, at work. At work. Somebody said nationwide. Uh, where, where, where would they be at this time of day? Uh, 
we market to tourists that come to visit Nashville. And then we get some locals as well. So what, what, what would they be doing right now? Hopefully planning their vacation to come to Nashville next year. <laughs> <laughs> and so that they would be on a computer right now, right? Or uh, yeah, yes. on their mobile phones? Yes. Right. So what, what, are, what are some marketing changes um, that you've made since COVID happened? We're still in startup mode, so we actually haven't started our marketing yet. Okay. Has anybody on the call had to make like any drastic changes, like hurry up and get a website or hurry up and set up a social media, start email marketing? A lot of people said change of tone. You know, if they run an event space, they have to really change the language. Mm -hmm. Other folks said nothing drastically changed. Oh, I'm, I'm shocked. Had to turn to virtual events. Yes, uh, change to virtual. And so uh, with the one that said changing the tone, what has, what's been challenging uh, with that? Or has it been fairly easy for you to do? You don't want to go off mute? I know. Uh, they just said everything has been challenging as they just couldn't operate. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So in talking to um, a lot of the small businesses that we surveyed and talking to, some of them had to hurry up and get websites because they didn't have a website or they had ignored their social media so long they didn't even know the password to get in and uh, Facebook wasn't allowing them to so they had to set up brand new um, Facebook pages. Uh, changing the tone and, and figuring out how to be transparent yet at the same time be considerate to what their customers were experiencing. So it's been uh, a very challenging um, time for marketers uh, during this time. And so just wanted to get a, a, a pause from that and was hoping people would go off mute and, and talk back to me because I love to talk, but I don't love to be the only one talking. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't get it off mute. I can talk. Oh. I'm the person who said, yeah, so I own two event spaces. And so um, obviously we had to change our tone considerably um, along with, you know, it's been crazy, but we, we were able to operate, not able to operate. So just a lot of communicating with our current clients about what was happening while at the same time trying to st still sell the venue for the future. So it was just trying to figure out, we changed all of our posts and, you know, every, everything changed tone wise. Yes. Yes. And um, I, like I said, a lot of people felt that, you know, it was very difficult. Yesterday we talked to a business owner who uh, said that he hadn't had to market in 10 years. Wow. And uh, he said, he's really peed off that those days are gone. And that he now has to learn how to market on all of these platforms that he's ignored for the last 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> and he was an older, a older business owner. Um, and, and even he is noticing that he has to now learn how to market on mobile and uh, include that into their digital strategy. Right. So. Uh, I'm the person that said that we market to tourists and um, we've been keeping, we've been closed the whole year because we have a venue and a live performance so we can't be we weren't able to do anything this year but we've been keeping in touch via Facebook but we're looking towards um, just joining the mobile marketing <laughs> arena so I, I'm, I'm very interested we're, we're one of those people also that we've you know had the same marketing in place for the last several years that we've been operationing and so we're looking to add this as another new um, leg of our marketing program. Yes, definitely. I think it'll be very beneficial um, for you, especially in the event space and um, uh, for tourists. And so let's uh, first identify what mobile marketing is and what it is not. So mobile marketing is a multi-channel digital marketing strategy, and it's aimed at reaching your target audience on their smartphones, their tablets, their smartwatches, uh, via websites, uh, email, text messaging, multimedia messaging, 
social media apps, push notifications, gamification apps, all of those uh, things that are not uh, search engine marketing. Um, oh God, my thing doesn't want to work. Okay, so uh, mobile marketing is not the same as digital marketing. Um, if I were to ask a lot of people on this call right now, if they were marketing mobile, um, most marketers say yes, and then they start naming off SEO, email marketing, search engine marketing, social media marketing, um, but those are not the same thing. Those are digital channels. Uh, digital marketing is delivered through uh, digital channels like the ones that I just named off, um, like SEO, uh, Google AdWords, uh, making sure that your website uh, has content, uh, Yoast for SEO. Um, and so it's important to identify the difference between what mobile marketing is versus digital, uh, digital marketing. And so basically digital marketing tools helps your customers find you uh, by them searching through uh, search engines and finding your content. And mobile marketing helps you find your customer and make sure that you are everywhere your customer is and, and adds multiple touch points um, to your marketing strategy. I wish my pointer would work, but it doesn't want to. So yeah, mine can't. always happens like that on slides. I just have to <laughs> click it a bunch of times. I know. I'm just going to put it out. All right, so let's get into the 17 R's of mobile marketing. The first uh, R of mobile marketing is review. Um, and talking to many of the small business owners, we noticed that they don't typically deal with data. They uh, see data as not as important for them as it is for a national chain, but data is your best friend. And so reviewing your mobile analytics to determine how many visitors are actually visiting your website via a mobile device will actually let you know how successful a mobile marketing strategy um, would be for you. There are over 230 million consumers who own a smartphone. 80% of them use their smartphones to search for a business. Uh, 6 30 this morning we got a uh, chat from our website where a user a uh, app user went to our business site and was like I can't find any businesses in my area like they are looking for your business on mobile apps uh, and they're not going to google searches often anymore um, 40 percent of online transactions are made from a smartphone and so that's why it's important to review your analytics to see um, what trends your customers uh, are based. Your analytics will tell you what trends your customers are asking for from you, okay? The next R is relevant. Uh, make sure your mobile messages are relevant. Um, if you're going to be using uh, text message or MMS texting, make sure that it's relevant to your customer. And it, if it's not fostering a relationship with them, then they are going to unsubscribe. And nine times out of 10, they're going to stop buying from you if you're sending them things that's, that's not relevant to them. And so first off, ask permission before sending any marketing message um, and use a platform that allows them to opt out of your, your messaging campaigns. Um, some really easy platforms to use is Airship. Um, Airship handles all of your analytics. Airship helps you um, craft the campaigns for mobile mo mobile marketing, segmenting them out um, by local area, by customer interest, by behaviors, which is going to be really important to do. Um, and then uh, Taxity.com and Zapier are really mobile friendly for small businesses as well. Uh, don't send the same message to your entire customer base use uh, the, like the platforms that I just mentioned that allows you to personalize those messages. For instance, um, the tourist uh, company on here, if you're advertising in a, uh, an experience that's in the West End area, uh, let me see, no, let me do that the other way. If you're trying to get people to visit Nashville who are from the West Coast area, then you would use different language to uh, advertise that same experience uh, to get somebody from California to come to Nashville versus the language that you would use to get somebody to come from Boston. Does that make sense? The number three is request. Always request feedback from your subscribers and ask them how you know, they're perceiving your mobile marketing messaging. 
Um, don't get upset if they say, you know, that it's uh, spammy or it's irrelevant. Just listen and take the feedback and implement it. A couple of ways that you can get more people to respond um, to your request for feedback is to create a link at the end of your emails that allows your customers to submit feedback about the email content um, that you just sent them. Uh, that link should send them directly to a two or four question survey. Don't make it a 21 question survey. Uh, two or, or four questions um, should be enough. Uh, push notification surveys is really good. Um, allow them to just click on that push notification and it opens up to a two question survey. Um, like I said, two questions at best when you do it that way, it makes it really easy for them to respond. Offer special deals or discounts in exchange for providing valuable feedback. Uh, NODAT has a URL link uh, for our offers. If you want to give 50% off for someone to answer a survey, you can put that survey link at, at the URL and they click on that and, and take the survey and redeem the 50% off offer. Um, and it's also important to do to schedule one-on-one -on -one interviews face-to-face uh, -face through Zoom so that you get a good feel of what your customers are saying so that you know how to approach them on their mobile devices. You, you can't always get their emotions uh, in a, a clear articulation of what they're trying to convey uh, to you or, or what they wanna see uh, from you mobily uh, through online surveys, but scheduling interviews with maybe five customers uh, once a quarter is really important. I thought I saw something in the chat. Was there a question in the chat, Zach? Yeah, I can ask it. Um, Mary Caton asked, if you look at your data, is there a percentage or level of people coming from a mobile device that would indicate how and uh, how ifs and how much attention that you should pay to mobile marketing? Yes. Like, how do you know that's really like the strategy you should take? Mm -hmm. um, so with, with Google Analytics, let me say this. So we have two different customers. We have mobile users and we have uh, B2B customers. One thing that we noticed uh, and that we were really surprised about was that the majority of our B2B customers was coming to our website on mobile. And when I say majority, we're talking about 59% was coming, was visiting our website, checking out our content from their mobile devices, where with users, it was higher users were finding our mobile app from their um, via desktop, which means that they were probably searching for stuff at, at work while they were at lunch or, or something like that. And so when, um, it, when you have 59% of your uh, website traffic coming to your uh, site on mobile, that means the first thing you need to do is make sure that your page loads less than one second. So, and, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit further down, but Google page speed test will tell you how fast your, your page loads on mobile and it will tell you what you need to fix, like rendering your photos uh, using, um, uh, smushing them down to like uh, JPEGs, I'm sorry, PNGs and not using, uh, they, I might, get this wrong, PNG or JPEG, one of the other is better. I can't remember uh, which one right now, but Google will tell you, you need to convert this to a, a PNG and, and compress it. Um, there are plugins called Smush. Smush compresses all of your images to make them mobile friendly and, and uh, speeds up your website. Um, Amp Mobile is another plugin that you can put on your website. So where it automatically converts your desktop site to a mobile responsive website. Was there another question in the chat? Uh, just saying that PNG is better. Okay, yeah. I knew it was one. I, 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 if I'm not looking at it and it's telling me which one to do, then I don't remember. But uh, yeah, just making sure that all of your, your uh, images are uh, changed to a PNG. Um, uh, yeah, offer your mobile community to every customer during every interaction until they tell you to stop. Um, be consistent. Um, I know there's someone on, on the call that I interviewed last night, Quince Juice Cafe. We interviewed her for Note at for Small Business Spotlight. And she mentioned that she is uh, getting ready to offer subscriptions. Um, she has a, a mobile app. Uh, that she's getting developed and she's getting ready to offer subscription plans to her 
uh, menu items. And so being consistent in uh, every interaction until that customer says, no, I don't want it, and, or until that customer joins that subscription plan, offering it at every interaction. And when I say interaction, your email marketing, um, offer it on your social media, offer it when they come in, offer it on your receipts, and in, in, uh, increase your touch points to get them to buy into your mobile marketing campaign. I see more more questions in the chat. Uh, it's just uh, the PNG versus JPEG oh, okay. debate. Nobody oh. knows the true answer. I think Virginia might be onto something though. <laughs> what did she say? Um, PNG is better, but for load times, you want JPEG. PNG is better resolution, but JPEG reduces the file size. Pros and cons to both sides, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, but you, one thing is you want to follow what Google wants. That's the thing, because if, if you go against what, what Google wants, then it's going to be hard for them to index uh, your website, and um, it will uh, render very, very slow. And when, they, when your visitor clicks on your page, they'll get a white screen until everything loads. And so you kind of want to, let me say whatever search engine, um, you're optimizing for, you want to follow their rules. And, and Google will tell you which one to optimize your images um, for to make sure that your page loads according to their standards. So definitely go to uh, Google PageSpeedTest.com and run a test and do one for desktop and do one, uh, definitely do one for mobile, but do one for desktop too. Uh, number five is registering your mobile marketing uh, program. It should be very easy and frustration Free. Customers' uh, attention span nowadays is really uh, less than five seconds, but if you can get your sign-up process to um, five seconds, um, then you'll be more uh, very successful in, in getting more people uh, signing up into your campaigns. They don't like um, long sign-up processes, so using like a QR code or a text link to have them sign up. Um, and don't ask for too much information up front. You can get all the information you need after you get them in the program. So the bare minimum, uh, if it's just their telephone number that you need, ask for their name and their telephone number and let that be it. Um, if it's just their email, just get their email and then collect their name and everything else on the, on the back end. Um, it's very tough to get them to download an app. Uh, so think community. Uh, or web app. A uh, community app would be something like uh, Notat, where we allow the users to access multiple uh, businesses or multiple loyalty programs all on one app. So they already have an app on their phone. So it's easier to get them to buy into your program because they don't have to go and sign up again and they don't have to download another app. Um, there are web applications that you can uh, use because which the user doesn't have to actually download a app in order to participate in your branded uh, campaign. Uh, and just remember there's a five second rule um, with your sign up process. Just get that down to five seconds and then you're winning. Um, that, if there's a questions app, feel free to, to stop me. I see the. Yeah, I'll stop you. I think we're good. Okay. Uh, number six is rate the usefulness of your campaigns to your subscribers. Do, are they provi providing insider information um, that's released to mobile marketing subscribers for anyone else? Uh, what's the value in it for them to join? And don't make it about you. Don't make it about, oh, my business is so awesome. We're, you know, we have the best this because that's not going to get them to join. How are you going to increase the value of their life by them allowing you to get on their most prized real estate, which is their mobile phone? And so, um, uh, like, is it going to be exclusive access to things that uh, your other customers don't have access to, daily deals? Are you going to double their points? Um, exclusivity and scarcity drives action uh, for a customer before um, anything else because we all suffer from FOMO. Nobody wants to miss out on anything. So if you can create that value um, that would make them think they're going to miss out on something for not signing up um, then or for not allowing you to text them on their mobile phone or send push notifications, then that's, um, your, that's the golden key. Um, understand what makes your customers tick, okay? And um, doing that with the customer surveys, 
face to face is definitely going to help you figure out what that FOMO uh, key is. Number seven is regional. We talked a little bit about that, like being location based with your mobile marketing, uh, being really location centric and sending messages that are valuable to your customers, uh, especially if you want to get them to visit a specific store, a specific promotion. You, you want to send messages that are tailored to that area. So for instance, here in Antioch, if you have a location in Antioch and you have a location on West End, when you send your mobile marketing messages, you need to be very specific to the Antioch area. Don't send out a, a wide Nashville message. Um, location, location data is such a big part of big data. Uh, again, I'm talking to a lot of small businesses, data has been ignored in the past because it's confusing and it's just a bunch of numbers. Uh, but getting to the point to where you can look at your data and uh, be able to tell a story with that to help you identify uh, what changes, what products to implement, what products to take away, uh, what to send to a specific uh, customer dem demographic. Um, paying attention to your data is, is very important. Um, and marketers create audiences based on real world visits rather than likes and follows and social media using geo-targeted campaigns. I can't tell you enough how many customers get excited about geo-targeting. They, they want to be able to drive down the street and get a text message that says, hey, get 10, pick up dinner at such and such and get $10 off. Or, you know, they, they want to be able to know what's available in their area, not specifically where they live, but where they are at that specific moment. So geo-targeting is very important. Um, number eight, using mobile marketing to send out reminders about time sensitive information or, or task is another great way uh, for mobile marketing, especially when a deal is approaching and it's about to end. Um, that is the whole basis of NODAT right now, uh, which is why we call it the Snapchat of um, local deals, um, because you can run a deal. We, we, we created a platform that allows you to create the illusion of a deal not being available for a long time. So you can set the deal in the app for like eight hours every day, eight hours one day, five hours the next day, or you could do eight hours every day, but it disappears at the end of that eight hour period every day. And then the customer just doesn't know that it's gonna pop back on the next day. It just creates the illusion to them that they have to buy it within that eight hour period or that deal is gone. And so sending notifications to create that urgency, uh, using Apple Pay and Google Pay allows you to send text reminders about offers, um, one of the really cool things about using um, Apple Pay and Google Pay as a marketing channel is that if you had a deal um, in your loyalty or if you sent a coupon to your customer's uh, phone through text message and they let it expire, Apple Pay and Google Pay allows you to update that deal and send that text, um, uh, send the deal through the text again. Um, so that's really cool. You don't have to go and redesign a whole nother deal, a whole nother campaign. You just push it back through, through Apple Pay and, it, and Apple texts your customer. Um, push notifications allows you to remind locals that your business even exists. Sometimes you just have to say, hey, we're here. Don't forget, we're right, right around the corner. So being able to do that on their phone and send a push notification, it's great. Um, sending just like a funny message. Um, you know, it doesn't always have to be selling. Um, you definitely want to take the same 80% 80, 80 value, 20% sales with the same thing. And so just like using it to start conversations with your customers, um, to give them a tip about something uh, that you know that they've been uh, asking about, sending like little small messages like that. And then a 30 second ad on a gaming app uh, reminds the customer of a special sale. Um, so your customers are playing a lot of games right now because they're home uh, and they're sitting on Zoom all day or they're watching TV and they have their phone in their hand and they're playing that crazy thug game that everybody is, keeps trying to get me to play. But you can run ads 
uh, a 30 second ad in that game just to remind them that you have a you know a specific sale um number nine is respect you want to respect your customers um uh, willingness to allow you to advertise on their phone. So the frequency in which you send these text messages and the push notifications needs to be uh, very limited. And it, like I said, needs to be packed with value. So like no one really knows what the right frequency is. So ask your customers how much is too much. Um, and then also think what would be too much for you? What At what point would you unsubscribe and decide that you don't want to do business with this with this business anymore because they're texting you too much. Like you don't want to be like the the boyfriend or girlfriend that just won't stop texting. Every day is too much. More than once a day is too much. And without permission, it's definitely a no doubt. Um, no doubt's algorithm is set to send push notifications to uh, 100 users within a five mile radius. Um, Every, day, every seven days per business. So our customers would get a text message. Let's say Quince Juice wanted to send out a special uh, on today. So we would send that special through a push notification and we would hit 100 of our users within a five mile radius. Then Quince cannot send a message to those 100 users from our platform within the same seven days. So if she wanted to hit send another message, then she could do it the next day and hit a different set of 100 uh, of our users. Then that way we make sure that our platform isn't spammy and that our customers are only getting offers that are relevant um, to them. Um, and then ask your customers what they want to receive from you so that you're providing value and, and not being spammy. And I think I've said that like five times and that is very, very important. I'm gonna try to speed up here. So number 10 is the return. Um, re make sure that you uh, use it to return status information like your orders on the way. Uh, we, we got your complaint and we're checking up on that. Um, using that WhatsApp is amazing for responding for support tickets. Uh, also Twitter chats, um, customers um, love those. WhatsApp for even phone calls, like if you don't have uh, a 1-800 number, even just using WhatsApp to allow your customers to, to call you. Uh, mobile marketing allows you to connect to your customers all the time. So make sure that you have a chat bot across your website and your social media um, that talks to each other. HubSpot is really good for that. I, I really wanna know how many people, how many business owners on this uh, call right now actually uses HubSpot or have heard of HubSpot. Anyone on here? I try and push HubSpot to everyone, but in Renew, I've had so many meetings I can say where people have never heard of it and they're just using spreadsheets and I'm like, I'm going to change your life. <laughs> yeah. And I, I uh, if I have enough time, I have my HubSpot up all day, every day. And I'm, I'm just being transparent here. When I was in in-flight, they talked to me about HubSpot too and I didn't do it at that time. But now HubSpot is hands down, <laughs> HubSpot is the CRM for small businesses, especially since you get, I think, a 90% discount with uh, the EC. Is that still, do y'all still have that partnership? We still have that partnership. Yeah. I mean, it's $5. When I, well, when, when I signed up, it was $5 a month for the starter. And the starter gives you access to um, so many tools that really should be paid. Like you can create landing pages. You get 20 landing pages in the starter, um, uh, the starter package. And analytics is already set up. They tell you how many people visit your landing page. Where did they come from? They come from LinkedIn. They come from Facebook. They, like they track your users across every touch point for you. Um, your email marketing, the statistics is already there. They, and they basically lay it out in a story for you and tell you this customer was engaged. This customer, um, last week, this customer didn't click on, on anything, but this week, this customer did. So this customer's kind of moving up um, the chain. So a HubSpot is a very good platform for you to be on. But the reason why I brought it up uh, for mobile is because they're, they're chat bots. 
Their chat bot um, actually installs across your website, installs across your mobile app, installs across your social media, so that where at any touch point, at any time when a customer goes on and responds to you, it comes to your cell phone and uh, it gives the impression to your customer that you got this whole customer service team at their at their fingertips ready to help. And so uh, implementing a chat bot is, um, I mean, it's, it's a no brainer. Um, and then using it to send text and email transcriptions of your support tickets, customers love that, um, especially if they're calling about a customer service inquiry, uh, you know, installing a uh, software that allows you to send a recap of that conversation so your customer can have notes. Uh, that goes a long way um, with your customers so they don't have to, you know, depend on, you know, think that they're going to call back and not and, and be told something different. And they know that you are actually listening to them and, uh, and following up, but um, installing a platform that allows you to do that and send that through email or text message. Um, respond to any reply text as you would any other customer service and marketing. Just because it's on their cell phone doesn't mean you lose your business etiquette. It doesn't mean you lose your brand identity. You need to be professional and consistent and cohesive um, throughout and use the same language. Don't leave your customer on red um, and uh, don't use an auto, I mean, a, a no, retake, no reply text service. If you're going to text your customer on their device, they should be able to text you back. Don't block them from being able to respond. Um, use auto responders. If you're not available, make sure that your customer knows that. Um, and that you will respond when you are. And again, be professional, be consistent and be cohesive. Don't lose your brand identity just because you're using text, uh, text message marketing. Record any document or any concerns or complaints or feedback um, and then act on those. Use mobile marketing analytics again uh, to make product decisions uh, and customer service improvements. If you see that your customers are going to a specific page on your website, uh, and maybe they're not putting they're putting it in the cart, but they're not hitting pay, um, find out where the drop off point is. Google Analytics will tell you um, what that drop off point is, and and use that information to make a decision on whether you need to offer a, a discount uh, on that off on that product, or maybe. Um, you don't have the, the right color or, or, or something like that. Um, and then using Typeform or SurveyMonkey to administer regular marketing product and customer survey, uh, customer feedback surveys. Typeform is uh, my favorite because it allows you to uh, make it look like a landing page. Um, you can uh, make it interactive through your email. Um, it doesn't actually look like a survey. It's, it sends them one question and they answer it and the second question pops up. Um, and so it, it's really mobile responsive. It doesn't look like they're taking a survey at all. Um, and then implement the data that you find uh, through these surveys to improve your strategy, your marketing and your product. Be responsible when marketing on mobile. Make sure that you are... Uh, transparent, you're honest, uh, don't offer something that you cannot deliver. Um, campaigns and programs, they'll encourage the customer to be on the lookout for your next notification as long as you are honest with them and that you design your campaigns to be brief uh, and targeted to a specific group of people. Um, again, our platform allows you to create very brief and limited discounts that'll have customers kind of like sitting on the side, on the edge of their seat, trying to see what deal you're gonna drop next. Um, being transparent and honest with your campaigns creates loyalty uh, and trust, um, including stipulations. And one thing that we found in our survey, and we're about to release a white paper uh, based off of the, the data that we collected, consumers said that when a, a business offers uh, discounts and they are honest about the limitations and the stipulations of that discount, it makes them trust the business more and then it lowers their barrier to providing data. Something that 
that simple that businesses should be doing anyway can lower, can make your customer say, yeah, you can find out where I be all day. Yeah, I'll tell you my birthday. I'll tell you what I drink when I wake up in the morning. And that's um, data that every marketer wants to collect. And all the customer wants from you is honesty. And so it's really important that you um, be responsible when marketing to them on their mobile devices and um, execute honesty and transparency with every campaign that you um, execute. Uh, number 14 is referrals, using mobile marketing campaigns to gain new subscribers and customers, uh, encourage your existing customers to spread the word and offer incentives. We call it putting your customer to work for you um, and turning your customer to a marketer. In that same survey, our users told us that word of mouth is the most effective way to get uh, to, that in influences their buying decisions. And what we found is that word of mouth was more effective than Google ads. Word of mouth was more effective than social media. And so tapping into your community and getting your customers to use their mobile phones to refer your business or to tell somebody about your business or to post about you on social media is what's gonna really help small help your, your business. Um, and increase your visibility within specific locations. Tapping into the local nano influencers um, to help you target the family member, the church member, the soccer mom, the gym mates. A lot of people are focused on uh, macro and micro influencers. Nano influencers is new on the market. And we actually started talking about nano influencers in 2017. And I think we were a little ahead of our time. Um, because we wanted small businesses to get super hyper focused on the people that they target on mobile. And, and that means get your everyday customer who has maybe 2000 followers on social media to talk about you because their engagement is going to be more uh, valuable, more real than the influencer who has 150,000 followers, who those followers may very well be somewhere in China. So uh, using the, your, your mobile marketing strategy to build your local nano influencers in your community and turn your everyday customer into a marketer for you. And also advertising on mobile games allows you to incentivize the gamer to share your ad with their contacts in exchange for you giving them points in the game that they're playing. We, that's how we ended up getting the 10,000 downloads on Nodat. We advertised in mobile games and we awarded whatever level they were trying to get to in that next game, we awarded them the, the coins that they needed in order for them to, to share our app or download our app. And so you can, you can use those type of incentives to get them to share your ad or, or visit your website or take a survey. Uh, number 15, rely on good systems and software to deploy your mobile marketing messages. Uh, just going beyond big social. We learned that a lot of small businesses, as far as their marketing goes, is big social, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, email marketing. But it's important for 2021 to go beyond big social and focus on platforms like Nodat, like HubSpot, like Textly, like Google display ads, not necessarily search, where search ads may be good, but display ads puts your ads across multiple mobile devices where the customer already is. And then your ad just shows up and it follows that cookie foot footprint, follows them across uh, multiple displays. Um, also being important of uh, being on Google My Business. Some tools that I recommend is uh, progressive web, web apps, um, creating a Wix app, if you have a Wix website and Polymer, Polymer will help you create a web app. Uh, again, testing your page speed on Google page speed test, your page should load in less than one second. Uh, take Google's recommendations, anything they say uh, that you need to fix to increase your speed, um, definitely take their recommendation. Uh, AMP Mobile is a plugin that you can add to your website that automatically turns your desktop site into a responsive mobile uh, website. Your mobile site should 
Um, it shouldn't necessarily look the same as your desktop site. Um, it should be optimized for mobile. The, the font size should be different. The header size should be different. Where you place your headers, where you place your buttons, that should be uh, optimized for mobile. AMP will do that for you across multiple devices so you don't have to figure out um, what, what sizes work best across Google or iOS or uh, Windows um, devices. And this is the reality is that mobile marketing is new and not many companies have fully adopted a mobile marketing strategy for their, um, their business or their clients. Um, and not all customers want people to text them on their, on their cell phones, but there are a growing number of users who rely heavily on mobile devices. And so they would welcome it as long as it's adding value to their life. That's what's important. How are you increasing the value of their local life? Um, since we're talking local businesses, uh, not even necessarily local, how are you just adding value to their life uh, that would make them want to allow you uh, on this prime real estate? Um, and um, as I said, again, most marketers believe that they're already marketing on mobile, but you're not. Facebook is a digital channel. Facebook audience network is a mobile marketing channel. Um, the audience network basically takes your ads and put it on mobile devices outside of Facebook. Um, text message and MMS is a marketing channel. Uh, you can't afford to ignore this, this marketing trend because it's not going anywhere. Um, your customers are looking for you on their mobile device and you need to be there. And 2020 has definitely, definitely accelerated the need to implement this strategy. And it's uh, rapid adoption. Try stuff out. Get out there, explore, have fun with it, and see what works best for your business. Your customers are playing games on their phone. They're watching YouTube videos. There's absolutely no reason there shouldn't be an ad about your business coming across on YouTube. Um, definitely on TikTok, um, productivity apps. We just started a campaign with Fox 17 um, with their pro programmatic ads where uh, we're whoever their display partners are here in Nashville, that's where we'll be because everybody's watching the news right now. That's why I asked the question, where are your customers? And our customers are concerned businesses, uh, concerned business owners, and they're keeping up with the news, keeping up with uh, COVID regulations, keeping up with the shutdown, the, the, you know, the, the shutdown. So we want to be wherever they are. So we just started a campaign there. You know, customers like surprises on, your, on their mobile devices, um, like drop in special discounts, special VIP events, surprise insights that nobody else gets unless you text them on mobile. And here are some tools that we talked about. Uh, again, the Google, uh, Google Pay, Apple Pay, uh, Google Display Ads, which is really, really important. Um, the QR codes. Uh, there was a really cool thing that uh, this guy did. He created a QR code of his menu and he did a discount on one, on one item and he put it out in front of his restaurant. And when the sun shined on the QR code, anybody that walked up to it got a, a, a different discount. Like uh, that it would give them a surprise discount. He increased the sales at his sub shop just by doing that because people just like they just want an experience, right? And so if you can give them that experience, then you can be on their mobile device all day, every day, selling and raking up and making money. So uh, mobile is uh, mobile use is growing faster than all of Google's internal predictions, and the trend has been that mobile was winning, but the reality is that mobile has now won, and that was a quote from Bloomberg. Uh, you you got to be on mobile. Thank you. All right. Any questions? I know I, I talked really, really fast and that was a lot. No, that was awesome. Thank you. Do Any folks have questions? I know I'll just kind of talk because someone messaged me privately because we mentioned the HubSpot thing. Let me know if you want to direct me to that HubSpot discount um, or I'm sure someone else on the EC can like talk about how they use HubSpot as well, like a fellow member. Um, happy to kind of share that information with people. Yeah, definitely get on HubSpot. It, uh, let me show, let me see if I can, let me show you. 
Am I sh can y'all see my screen or no? Yeah. Y'all see the HubSpot or? I can see it. Okay. Um, yeah, it's really, really easy to use. So it, it stores all of your, your contacts. So like anybody that you email, if you can connect your Google, your domain email, uh, and when you email them, it'll ask you in your, in your actual personal Gmail, if you want to create a HubSpot um, contact for that person or for that business. And then they, they segregate it for you. Like you can create list, uh, import whole entire list. Um, let me see. So when everyone gets an email from me, it's because you're in my HubSpot list. And I have a different list for different types of members, different program participants, everything. Yeah. And this, this same chat box that that's on my HubSpot is also on our, on our uh, know that website. And we can change that chat box. Right now it says, hey, how can we help you create your first offer? Um, and that comes to my cell phone when someone um, messages me, it comes straight to my cell phone and I just reply back through the app, through the HubSpot app. And it's, you know, they think I'm sitting at a desk talking to them. I could be in the grocery store when I get one of these and respond. Um, this is where you manage the chat flows. That's so funny. Honestly, I don't even have that set up, Erica. I maybe need to talk to you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Um, and so we have people call me and I just want them to text. I'm just like email or text. Please don't call me. I'm in meetings all day long. <laughs> my, my voicemail is so full that I can't even take, I can't even give, I have, I have 91 mixed tech, no, 103 mixed, missed text messages. My voicemail is full. Just text, like, just text me. I'm, that's totally. all right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can set up for a Facebook messenger and for your website, um, for the chat flow, marketing, it, it manages your Facebook ads. This is the craziest thing though. You don't have to do anything in this. It automatically picks up that you're running Facebook ads and then HubSpot just starts managing it and, and letting you know when you've got a, a, a hit, how many link clicks you've got, how that traffic is affecting on your website. Um, you, this is another cool thing, the deals, it tells you how much, um, how, when you get your uh, prospects, it tells you how much money you have in the pipeline um, and, and it helps you manage your deals. And then you can move them from one step to the next. Once you've done, uh, completed a step like, okay, I sent them the first welcome email. I, they set up a, a booking with me. You can move them through the process and then it changes your, your deal flow. Let me, like lets you know how much money you have in the pipeline, how much you've closed. Um, bookings, it gets to your own personal meeting uh, link. Yeah. I would like, say Amy had a question if this is takeover from MailChimp. It kind of does what your MailChimp does, what your maybe Calendly does, what your marketing does, but all on one. It's just a customer relationship management software. Mm -hmm. um, and there's several. So Salesforce is also a CRM. That's something that people have heard of. But Salesforce, Salesforce is like the Lamborghini of CRMs. This is like a Honda Civic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but honestly, that's all you need. <laughs> that's all I was gonna say. It is so. It's made for small businesses, and it helps you with uh, like it. It t every marketing channel that you have, you can manage in this one CRM. Uh, listen, you can create your website from HubSpot. You can write your blog from HubSpot to make sure that everything is cohesive. It every touch point is touching each other. A lot of things that I see that a lot of small businesses are doing is like they're they're posting on social media, on um, Facebook and Instagram, and then they're using their websites. But then they're not talking to each other, and that is a huge problem. All of your touch points should be connected so that you can follow your customer's journey, and uh, especially on mobile because you're it not only allows you to follow your customer's journey um, while they're on the mobile phone, 
but then you can say, okay, so this person um, lives in Nashville, but she, for eight hours out of the day, she's in Laverne. Her location shows that she's in Laverne, so she most likely works in Laverne. So I could send her offers for the Laverne area because she's not really in Nashville the majority of the time. So like it lets you track, um, that, like where your your customers are, what they're interested in, where they spend the majority of their time online. Like it's just. Man, it helps you make better decisions when it comes to marketing so that you're not wasting money and wasting time. So mm -hmm. I feel like I just started preaching about HubSpot. So. I know. I, I also got on my soapbox, though. Um, Vicki asked if we could get your slide deck. Yeah, definitely. I'll send that. Yes. What other okay. questions do folks have? I think I thought maybe Neely had a question. Did I see you unmute yourself at one point, Neely? <laughs> Well, I was going to ask a question about what your favorite platform is if you're doing basically email marketing, but you're trying to personalize your email marketing. So you're emailing someone directly, but it's going to be kind of a form. Do you have one that you like or is HubSpot the best? Hub, HubSpot allows you to do simple emails and not uh, like, like I'm saying, I use Gmail, which is my domain. Um, my Gmail is set up with my uh, company domain and so this is how I talk to my investors how I talk to uh, like beta customers I don't send them the marketing but it all I can do this same thing from my gmail or I can do it from here because you have um so let me see if I can create an email here so this simple right here and we can't see your screen right now, by the oh, way, Erica. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No worries. Okay. So this simple email right here, when it's sent, it'll look like it came. Uh, it'll look like it came from here. And then you have this inbox here, which is essentially the same inbox it tracks everything like this is this is the user this morning's so like i can't find any office in your area it like it it kind of puts it all into one so you can you can um email from here you can email from your regular one or you can create a custom designed marketing emails i mean there's no end to what you can that's do that's amazing that's yeah. awesome thank and you you're welcome and you can actually create uh multiple multiple ones and manage them all in one place like we have the support one uh my cto has an email and so if you wanted them to be able to see you can choose and say yeah share this specific email with the whole team or or don't share this email with the whole team like it's it's nuts what, what you can do with this platform that's awesome thank you you're welcome Vicky yeah. asks, do you find that many small businesses know about this? Do you mean HubSpot or just mobile marketing in general? I could say no and no to both. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Well, anytime I ask a small business if they're mobile uh, marketing on mobile, they say yes, because they think that because they're on Facebook, Instagram, and because they have a website that they're marketing on mobile. Those are digital marketing channels. That's not marketing on mobile. Any final questions before we wrap up? And if anyone is interested in joining our VIP beta club um, in testing out the note at hot offers uh, free for six months, definitely um, let me know. I think it's either you or Haley, the other Haley that has the information for. It's um, not me. So I'd love to share that out. Okay, I'll send it to you. Um, but yeah, definitely uh, free for six months. Quince Juice Cafe is on there. She has uh, a couple of BOGOs on there, a $5 off a of five pack juice, Quinn. So yeah. I love it. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Erica, thank you so much for this super informative call. Um, and I'm already getting emails for folks following up with me with other questions, which is awesome. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Yeah, have a great day. Thank you for having me.
Bye. Thank you so much. You're welcome.